Today we're in Southern Florida to talk to a man who's indisputably the greatest golfer of all time with 18 major wins, one of the greatest athletes of all time, and a man who's not a watch collector but has one hell of a watch. His name is Jack Nicklaus and today we're talking watches. Jack, it is a true pleasure to meet you. This is hero status for me here. You are, I, I grew up playing golf. It is an immense, immense pleasure to be here with Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Man. So, you know, this is a, a show that, that we like to do with, with people of note to talk about your personal relationship with a watch. You have one watch that means something very important to you and the watch is on your wrist currently. And so what year did you get this watch? 1966, I was in Japan for the Canada Cup, now the World Cup. And Arnold had a relationship, Arnold Palmer had a relationship with Rolex and Rolex asked uh, Arnold and Gary Player and myself to come to a, to a cocktail party. And so I went to the cocktail party and Rolex said, you know, for as, as a thank you for coming to the cocktail party, we'd like to give you a watch. And I'd never worn a watch. Yeah. And uh, I said, fine. And Gary Player looked over and said, take that one, it's the best one. <laughs> and it was, wasn't this particular watch, but it was that example of the President Day date. Uh -huh. And Mark McCormick was then doing my work from IMG. And Rolex delivered the watch to Mark the next April in Geneva. That watch at that time was retailed for $300. <laughs> Slightly different than today. Slightly different than today. Yeah. And I wore that watch, uh, I wore that watch all my life. I, mean, I think virtually every tournament that I ever won, I'm filmed if, if the watch is visible yeah. or if there's, if there's a visible place on my wrist, yeah. that watch was on it. So you would wear it to the course, then hand it over to your caddy, or what would you do with I, it while you were playing? I, well, I probably shouldn't tell people what I do with it, but I put <laughs> it in a little bag in my golf bag. As soon as the round was over, I'd walk off the 18th green, and I'd put my wallet back in my pocket and my, yeah. and my watch on my wrist. So virtually any picture that I was taking after a round of golf, the watch was there. And this is the very first watch that you've ever owned? First watch, and actually the only watch I've ever owned. It's a watch I wore all my life. It's a watch that I felt like I didn't want to just give it to one of my kids. Right. And so it would probably end up going into a drawer someplace. I thought the watch ought to go benefit something. And my, my goal is to benefit charity with it. And so my feeling is that I'd like to have the watch go to somebody who is really interested in the watch. And I'd like the money that comes to it, go to our Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation, which benefits kids, mm -hmm. and the Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami. That's my goal. That's what I'd like to do with it. And I suppose I can get another watch. I'll, I'll miss wearing the same watch, but sure. I'm not going to be around forever with the watch has a good shot of being around forever. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as somebody who, who studies watches professionally, I've kind of run the numbers, and this, I think, would be among the top three most important watches in sports ever. I think there's one or two others out there that would, that would rival it potentially. Paul Newman's Paul Newman Daytona, for example, another Rolex would, would be similar, but that doesn't even have the same legacy that, that this does because he didn't, he wore that watch at Le Mans once or twice, but the fact that you wore this watch before and after almost every major tournament from 1967 on, and every day around here in Florida. And every day. Florida, Fishing, hunting, games for my grandkids, yeah. my kids. So you mentioned fishing, and I see a giant, giant fish on the wall. What is the story? The one with behind the, us up the here? The one right there. Well, that particular fish, I, I've got the film of that. We've got it over the archives in the office. And I'm sure this watch is on while I'm fighting that fish. And how big is that fish? That, that fish there is the largest black marlin by measurement that's yeah. ever been caught. Still is. That it, was caught in 1978. In the world? In the world. I hooked up at uh, quarter of five in the evening and landed at 10 minutes after 11. Six hours and 25 minutes, I fought that fish. It's 15 and a half feet long. It's uh, seven foot girth. It's 29 and a half inches around the base of the tail. It's big fish. <laughs> it's a big fish. It's a big fish. It took a long time. Yeah, and you were wearing your gold Rolex president. Gold Rolex was on my wrist. So you've owned this watch for 50 years now. Have you ever been to the Rolex factory? Have you ever been to Geneva to yep. see where these are made? They had a, an event in 2007, and they honored Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, Jean-Claude Keeley, and Jackie Stewart and myself. Nice sporting event. Yeah, good crew. I was good crew, and it just happened to coincide with my wedding anniversary. It was my 47th wedding anniversary. So I organized with the folks at, uh, at Rolex, and I said, look, I want to take Barbara tour of the factory, but I'd like to end up in a showroom. I'd written a little note and put it on on the table, and I said, Barbara, happy anniversary. I said, it's your choice to pick your, your anniversary present. And so she went and read the note and said, 
Dear Barbara, thanks for a great 43 years. We've had a wonderful time. We've had a wonderful marriage, and this is, I'm looking forward to another 43 years. And she said, have you seen this note? And I said, what do you mean that I see this note? I said, I wrote it. She said, well, I know you wrote it, but did you actually read it? I said, what do you mean? She says, read it. 43 years, this was our 47th wedding anniversary. She says, so I said, I just quickly said, oh, I guess we had four bad years. Yeah. <laughs> and I got away with it. <laughs> So I've been told that you're not really a collector of, of, of things, and this watch and a money clip are the two things that, that you really kind of take pride in, in owning. Yeah, the money clip I got in my pocket. Yeah. It's all, those are the two things that are always with me. Yeah. That money clip was, uh, I won in 1963 for a long drive in a PGA driving contest. <laughs> PGA Championship, Dallas, Dallas Athletic Club. Yeah. They had the driving contest for some reason, they only had them in 63 and 64. Yeah. Then they renewed them, started over about three or four years ago. But I hit a drive at Dallas Athletic Club, 341 yards, 17 inches. <laughs> and uh, I got the prize for it. That was what it says. It says driving distance winner. And I've carried that money clip has been in my pocket for 54 years. That's amazing. So and I haven't come, and I knock on wood, but I haven't come close to losing that either. Yeah. <laughs> And so when you were 13 years old, you were obviously playing golf actively, but did you really know how far golf would take you at that point? Not a clue. Golf was another sport and something that I enjoyed and loved it. And I was really honored to be able to play at a national tournament. And sure. I did. What other sports were you playing back then? I was playing football, basketball, baseball, uh, tennis. I did everything that you could, you're supposed to do. I, I enjoyed sports all my life, played all sports. I played in a recreational basketball even until I was 40 years old. So you were I, 40? Yeah, I came home after I played a golf tournament on Sunday night. Monday nights, we would play games. No kidding. Yeah. Well, I was, I was recruited at basketball for Ohio State. And, you know, I was trying to make up my mind whether to play basketball and golf. Was pretty practical. I realized that at just under six foot and not jumping, jumping real high or not probably quick enough to really guard, yeah. you know, I could score points. I can always score points. But uh, I was practical about that and decided to concentrate on playing golf in college. And uh, so I won the NCAA and the National Amateur while I was in college. And so uh, it was probably the right choice for me. I, I would say. <laughs> I would say golf is probably the right choice. 